Hi, this is Lise Nielsen, Artist in the Woods. I'm working in the studio today. It's storming outside, um, but after getting back from my painting trip, I really was excited about getting back to uh, some studio work, doing some oil painting. So that's what I will be working on today. I have this study for my trip, which I keep going back to. The values and the colors in this, I think I got, I just nailed it. So I am really excited and I really love the simple composition. So this is what I will be working on today. I hope you enjoy. Here is my setup today. I have my my photograph for reference um, to get some more detail. Not too much though. Um, I like the simplicity of it, like I said, so I'll try to stick with that. Um, but I want to develop this area just a little bit more. This is my uh, focus right in here with the cloud and mountain. Um, and then everything else is subordinating uh, information. So. <clears throat> This is an area just um, outside of Moab, Utah, and we went there for lunch on our on our afternoon drive. So there's actually a little more light up on top. Not much is seen back here. I'm just trying to give it the character. So this goes up. And across. And then up here. I don't want anything competing. So if these are the same level, that's going to be a problem. I'll have to go back and knock that down with sky color. Always thinking of the hole on these. Okay, and then I want to look at, I'm looking at my colors from here. Also, it should be a little lighter, paying attention to the the values, always comparing. I want to teach you what my thoughts are when I'm doing this. This is a demonstration, but it's also, I'm also teaching while I'm doing the demonstration. Hmm, these don't really line up, right? I think this goes this way. Values are looking good. Okay, and then I've got, this probably needs to be lighter. It's a little warmer and lighter. Not a lot though, not a lot of change in there. So even though it's a high key painting, you'll see these uh, darks there are just not very many of them. It's mostly high key. <clears throat> you see those Moab colors coming through. I'm going to use some colors in here. That's right, I was going to change that top part there. And then burrowing some of that. I don't like to mix with my brush, but occasionally I'll be doing that.
thin paint here. I think I ordered this canvas from Amazon and it's really a pretty fine canvas to work on. Um, I'll post that for you so you can know what that is. Um, and then what I would do with it after, after the painting is dry um, in order to post it for sale, I would um, back it with a piece of wood, just a thin piece of door skin, which is like a, it's like a, it's a veneer type wood. There is some of that red coming through, but it looks pretty good, actually, I think. And then there are some darker areas that also come through looking at the photo. When you go bigger with a painting, um, you're working from a small study, you will want more detail. I know I've said that before, but um, some of you haven't seen my other videos, so some of this detail in here. A lot of horizontal lines in this, in this painting. Okay. And then these, of course, are bigger closer to us. Thinking about, you know, the eye, keeping the eye moving in the right direction. reading really well from back behind what I have on there. That's good. Now, um, I'm not, this is a railroad track going through here. Of course, I'm not going to put that in. Um, I'll add some variation in here and more plants. Um, there are more that you can see as they come forward. Uh, they're warmer as they come forward. A little, war little more warmth in that. Stays light, but a little more warmth in that. So let's see, that's not right. So it shifts, but just slightly. I wanna get these this down and then So you can see a little more warmth in that, hopefully.
I was going to put ochre on my canvas, on my palette today, and I misplaced my pliers. I couldn't get the tube open. So I mix my own. It's, it's very easy to mix. It's just uh, some, a lot of white and um, some yellow, and then a little red and a little of the green mixed in with it. It's very, it's actually a greenish yellow. So, um, that's what I did. Rather than go out in the cold, it's out in the car. <laughs> I didn't want to go outside. I don't have that quite right. Mixing with my brush, never good. Okay. That's about right. And lighter. All right, so the slope is going to be darker, and that's what this color is about. So um, I can put that in. It's trying to stay light for the top plane of that. And then it slopes downward. There was a kind of a little gully in there right um, right in front of me. I'm probably accentuating it more than what it was. But it was a nice um, piece of the composition. Added variety in there, and I liked it. It's really, it's about what you like, I think, also. There's dark down here, not quite that dark. I don't know where that came from. Blue, I dipped into the blue somehow. But there is some of that too. So maybe that was a good, a good mistake. There is dark down there. So I should be making those shadows anyway to uh i don't know what this is down here um but i like it i like the um energy in it uh at first i thought man this is not going to turn out because i was feeling so uncomfortable sitting there I was sitting on the edge of my car and it's an area where a lot of trucks go by and it's a two-lane highway but this, anyway, um, so I didn't really think I was going to do a very good job on it, but it, it really, it was really one of my favorites from the trip. So probably the one that needed the least amount of work. Yeah, it's coming out pretty nice. These scenes like this, they remind me of um, Maynard Dixon, the kinds of things that he he would paint. Um, his he had a studio not not too far from this area, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, on another trip, we drove by. It was that was fun to see where where he did some of his work. I love Maynard Dixon's work. If you don't know that artist, you should uh, take a look online at some of his work. And then we got to see some of his work in a, in a, uh, a gallery that was a part of, I think it was in Provo, um, in the, uh, a gallery that was a part of the school. There was a university there. So that was really, really nice. I love doing things like that. So, whoops, too much green. I don't know where that came from. And definitely too much blue. 
probably more red in that than anything, just because that's the, what the, the mountain is made out of there. It's a lot of that red. photo, having the photo close by uh, when you're painting it is really helpful, but then you just need to remember, don't use it too much. Um, you'll find that you're overworking your paintings if you do that. So, One thing that makes this look like a, a slope is to have these plants growing down the side of it and showing the slope in their uh, growth patterns. So you don't want to give this too much um, detail over to the side. You want your eye to stay towards the center of the painting without making that obvious. Um, as you go through to the sides, you want to have less and less um, detail. Pull your brush in the direction of the slope. ground plane down in here, which is very not, not attention seeking down in here, that's for sure. Is down at the bottom of the gully and so you have these plants sitting down here and they have more you'll see more of the green in these uh, they have a core to them their bushes handle bushes like small trees
some some blues down in here which will in the shadows which will help things uh, harmonize now I'm looking back at the at the um, study shadows here. think of the direction of brush strokes you want a variety of different types of brush strokes some very light maybe ground that just kind of pops up there have a little more warmth in it but light You have to decide if you put it in there and you're not sure what it was meant to be uh, that's not it's not a problem you know because if it might be grasses in here um, that are catching the light but it's serving a purpose and it works in the study for some reason and you still don't know what it is but that's fine it's it's if it works it's still okay because as you know, these paintings are, these scenes are a conglomeration of grasses and uh, plants and beautiful organic material. That's what draws us to these. making your eye move in the painting. I'm back here on the second day of working on this painting, and there are a few things that are bothering me about it. Um, looking back here in the background, um, it's this, this is, um, these, these differences back in here should not really show up very much, if at all. And so I'll work on getting rid of some of those. And then these should just be barely uh, seeing a difference there. Not much at all. Um, really just faded into the background, even, even these. This is too dark. 
Um, so these are the kinds of things that start to bother me after looking at it. It just looked too, um, it didn't look, this didn't look like it was in the distance naturally. And I want to make sure that I have it reading right. Um, this is too dark in here. So really it's going to be a very high key painting. This is too dark up here looking at the photo, but looking here, it is about bright. So I'll have to think about those kinds of things.
harmonizing. Uh, so some of these colors that are back in there might show up in some of these bushes a little bit. They might be lighter in tone, but um, a part of the same color family. Just I'm looking at the photo here now to see if I'm seeing any of that. It'll help to harmonize what's gone on back in here. So not probably not just in one place. And then I, I want to bring some of that red in as well. Try to see it uh, in the photo. I want to just guess at it. And you can mix a couple of the colors together to get some interesting um, harmonizing as well. So I used a little bit of red in that with the yellow. You just have to be careful not to muddy it out too much. And then make sure you're uh, using the right value. A lot of times the cooler yellow will work better in a in a mix like that. Not not make it so muddy because there's not as much mixed in with that cooler yellow uh, in terms of the colors that will muddy it out. I don't know if that makes sense, but a lot of times they've used complementaries to make those warmer colors. So um, sometimes if you go to mix those in, you're getting more colors in there than what you bargained for there, what you thought it would be in the mix. And that's why it gets muddy. Think of what it take what it took to make that color in the that come from the company who sells the the color tubes. I guess. Okay, your your plants going towards the background will become more cool in color. So they're gonna be. It's not dark enough. If you need to mix a red in, pick a cooler red for those background plants, and then they'll read better.
somewhat advanced, uh, really, but um, it it's really important to understand the different planes. And you've got you've got your um, your slanted plane, which is the mountains. So that would be your mid your middle tones. Your flat plane, which is the light tone. Your sky is the lightest. Then your ground plane, then your slanted plane, and then the darks are the upright form. And so some of these mountains, so like right in here, this is pretty upright, and that's why you see such a shadow on there. So I'm I'm just about finished with this painting. Um, I will go back in and maybe do a little bit more on the clouds, but I won't um, do that in in this video. Um, to try to shape the clouds a little bit, but I wanted you to see how I handle these these big planes and a high key painting. Anyway, this is Lise Nielsen, artist in the woods. I thank you so much for joining me today, watching me paint this high key painting from my uh, study that I did in the field. And um, I hope you join me again. I hope that you like this video and subscribe. Thank you and happy painting.